Hey guys, it's Bethany with ABQ Creations here with another tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you how to spray paint and then bling your tumbler. Um, I had tried searching out several tutorials on how to do this. I only found a few um, and so I decided to make one for you because I want to see how well this holds up. Now this was a gift for my sister-in-law so I'm going to see how well the stones hold up and um, see see how this works out for her in the long run. So I'll keep you guys up to date in the future on how this has held up. Um, I ended up getting my cup off of the stainless steel depot and here you can see my cup. But first, the very first thing that you want to do is prep your cup. So it's very important not to skip this step because you want to make sure that everything adheres to the tumbler and does not come off because you don't seal it in epoxy. So I'm going to start by filing down with um, my little sandpaper block and I start by sanding my tumbler really well. I go in a circular motion and just try to get everything really well sanded. While you're watching this, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to stay up to date on all of my current and future projects. Next up, you really want to wash your tumbler well. You want to get all of that dust and residue off of your tumbler. So I use Dawn dish soap. It's my favorite. It'll get all of the oils off too. Um, and then you want to make sure to dry it really well. And I know I've already done a bling tumbler. I'm going to actually do another one and I'm toying with the idea. I want to try the scatter method. So in my tumbler videos so far where I'm blinging them, I've done the honeycomb method. So what I'm really looking forward to trying is what's called the scatter method. And I'm going to do that um, with a leopard print design. And so I think that will turn out really cute. Again, I haven't really found many of those tutorials, so... Keep your eyes peeled for that and I will make, I'm going to make that one for myself. <laughs> this was kind of a fail at sealing it up. Um, it was kind of tricky. I guess I could have just stuffed in some of the, the uh, paper towel. So the tape didn't so much work out, but that's okay. We try things, sometimes they fail. Okay, so I'm outside, I'm going to spray paint. I wanna use the same base color as the, the um, gems that I'm gonna be putting on for the main part of the cup. So I'm using a purple. Ideally, you would not have a gloss finish, but I'm going to spray paint over it anyway with some Mod Podge matte, so that should help that. Um, and then it's, if you can tell, it's kind of wet today, so I've got my mom assisting me. She's covering this with an umbrella, so hopefully that won't cause issues with the curing. Okay, so it's cured for about two hours. You can see where I've had some drops form. I went a little too heavy handed with it. Ideally, you would want to be further back. I stayed closer because we do have a bit of a breeze going and we do have kind of that misting going. So I've been trying to control it more, which is why I did that. But I think even in spots that are a little more bare, you're better off airing on the side of going a little too thin with your coats because once you get the jewels on, you're really not gonna see that. You just wanna get some coverage so it's not silver in between or whatever color your cup is. You wanna have it match as close as you can to the jewels. I'm now gonna go in and I'm going to seal it because we're not gonna use resin on this. I'm going to seal with this Mod Podge mat and it's a clear acrylic sealer. 
Um, it's something that I've seen on some other YouTube channels. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm gonna see how this holds up. I'm gonna test it out, and then I'll let you know once the cup is finished how it does. Okay, so we're gonna let that cure and I'll see how it looks. If I feel like it needs another coat, then we'll add one more coat. Okay, so I finished putting glitter onto the top. It's dried, and then after that I did apply some of the matte spray to it. So it did take away some of the shimmer. I toyed with the idea of putting some epoxy on and then just putting it onto the bottom part of it so it could cure and it would be bring back some of the shine. So that's always an option. I don't want to put the jewels on the bottom, so that's why I opted for glitter. I still think it adds more to the bottom of the cup than what it would have otherwise. So I'm gonna stick with this for now and I can always change it up later. Um, so now I'm going to clean up with acetone. I'm gonna take out all of this. And you wanna make sure that you clean up the inside of your cup with acetone because you can't leave that paint in there if any did get inside your cup or inside your lid. You don't want to have any of that and it looks pretty good it doesn't look like i need too much cleanup on it but again i just want to be sure so i'm taking some of my acetone that i have and i put the gloves back on because i knew i would be touching the cup and i don't want to get my fingerprints and whatnot all over it so i'm just gonna get some of the acetone up in this well and then I'm just going to take it and kind of clean up on the inside because, and you want to do this anyway. I don't see paint, but some of the clear could have gotten in there. So you just, you don't know and you want to get it cleaned up nice. You can't be doing a cup and giving it to somebody if there's paint on the inside. That's not good. So I'm getting a little bit off. Kind of want to do the top. that looks pretty good so now I went ahead and already cut a name for the cup using my Cricut and so you want to again pick the same color or a similar color to what you're going to do for the jewels I have this little holder so what I'm gonna do is place my cup this is this just helps keep it level so I can kind of do my placement, figure out where I want the name. I'm going to find a nice smooth spot. You know, I had some of those drips from earlier, so I'm going to find the smoothest surface so that it doesn't show behind it. Now, when you're measuring out for your cup, for the name, I ended up making mine six inches wide. I liked how much it would cover. And then you have to also make sure that you don't make it too tall. You want to kind of keep it so that you can read the name and it's all visible. Um, and this is what I came up with. So now I'm just going to eyeball it. I have my transfer tape. So 
Now we're gonna eyeball it. Now you, there's a couple ways you could do this. You can either put the name starting at the top, working your way down, or towards the bottom and coming up. So for my last cup, this is, I, my personal preference is going from the bottom up, but there's really no wrong way to do it. It's just strictly personal preference. So I'm gonna find a good spot. Okay, again, just strictly eyeballing it and see if I can try to place it. I don't think that looks good. Okay. There we go. So I kind of start from the center, work my way out to smooth it out. You really want these letters on good. You do not want them coming off. I'm going to save my transfer tape. You can reuse this stuff over and over and over. Okay, so there, we've got that started. Now, again, there's a few ways that we can add our jewels, but what I'm first going to do is I'm going to start off, I'm gonna work from the top down. You wanna start at the widest point. It, it does have a slight taper to it. It gets a little bit narrower down here, and it's easier to fill in and downsize on your stones as you get down versus coming up and having to add the stones in. At least I think so. So I'm going to start and I'm going to get one full ring around. I am going to use the flat back foil violet lavender glass rhinestones. So I'm using SS16. They're going to be a little bit smaller. I kind of wanted to try one where I have the smaller stones and see how that looks. Um, typically you can do SS20 is really common to use for the main stone, and I really enjoyed that look, so I'm going to see how this one turns out. So let's get started. You want to let that first layer fully harden so that your stones don't shift or move. So I got my jewels from Be Createful. They had some a really helpful chart that I also purchased for future projects, and then I can see all the colors of all of the jewels that I want to use or the rhinestones um, for any future projects. And I would also recommend getting a starter pack or one of the sets, um, the multi-size sets, because then you can have filler stones as you go along. And you're definitely going to need the fillers for in between the name once you get to that point as well. So starting off, I'm going to do kind of just a little line at the bottom. And you don't want to go all the way around the cup right away. You want to start with whatever you need. You also have to make sure that you look at your cup when you're picking which one you're going to go with for style. Um, I chose this style because the lid doesn't come down over the top of this, so I know that when I'm placing my jewels, I can go right to the bottom. Then I don't have to leave kind of a gap for a lip to hang over. Some of the cups, you'll have a gap, and then you have to be worried about that. So I'm just gonna pick them up, and I'm gonna place them, and then I'm gonna play around with them a little bit. So you get them on and then I'll straighten them out. You wanna make sure that you really take your time to get the first row completely straight because that will affect your honeycomb and the rest of the project. Once they dry, that's it. There's no moving these guys. So 
So now I'm just going to speed up the video and you can watch as I place these and get my first row down. Okay, so I finished attaching the first row. I'm gonna kind of go back and just play with a little bit of them, just um, moving if I feel like they need to come down a little bit or up. Just making sure that I take the time to really get this line straight. This is the most important row that you're going to do in your project. So you wanna make sure that you really have it on straight. And there is a little bit of time for this to cure to fully cure it, it's like epoxy. You want to wait a few days before you wash it once it's completed. But I'm going to set it on my silicone mat upside down. And that way, if any of the stones do shift, they won't have very far to go. And then it'll just be nice and level. And so once that's dry, or at least dry enough to where the stones aren't going to move, I'll probably come back to it in a couple of hours and then I'll be able to continue on and work on the rest of the cup. Okay, so I let it sit overnight. I probably didn't have to do even that. A couple of hours would have been good enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my next row. And then I'm just gonna keep working up. I'll fast forward through the progress um, and then you can just see how it goes from there. For this second row, I want to do dots instead of having a straight line. Um, the line is okay for your first row, but at, after that point, you want to stick to these little dots in between if you're doing the honeycomb method like me. That way, if one jewel does fall off, it doesn't take a whole row with it.
Okay, so coming back around, I finally hit the point where I'm running into letters. Um, I was toying with the idea of just filling in with the purple right away and then leading into the silver. But I think what I'm going to do is do what I've done with the last two cups. I'll save the name for last. I'm going to skip over this and I'm just going to continue on with my purple loop and I'll go around and around until I meet up at the top here. So I'm going to just keep going, but I'm going to skip the name and save it for last, including filling in with all of the purple. Okay, you can play it.
Okay, so you can see that I finished all the way up, all the way around, except for the name. Uh, don't mind the mess in the background. I am recording this at my boyfriend's house, um, and I have to have this finished by tomorrow. So, <laughs> And of course, fireworks are tonight, so you know. Anyway, so I'm going to now finish up by filling in with the purple and my crystal stones um, and get the name done. And then I'm toying with the idea, we'll see how I'm doing tonight, but I'm toying with the idea of um, epoxy in the body, the bottom to really make the glitter pop, but we'll see. So I'll show you when it's finished, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this going and then I wanna show you, I'll start showing you how to do the name. Um, you can see, I did want to point out like on the back so like in some places I had to use these smaller size stones. You can see one there and there, um, here and here. Like I just, I tried to space them out a little bit, but as you're working your way up, sometimes you have to downsize on a stone and this worked really nicely for that. I knew exactly where I needed to go. So it worked out perfectly doing it from this, from starting at your widest point, working towards the skinniest point on your cup. Um, so I'm going to get the name going and then I will also show you how to bling out the lid and then once that's done I will show you the finished product. Okay guys, so I've gotten up to this point. It's gonna take a while. This part's a little more putsy than the rest of it, obviously, because you're trying to fill in and find the right size stones. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this. In the meantime, I wanna show you how I work on the lid. I'm gonna set this aside. So for my lid, I'm gonna to continue to use my SS16s, just as I did through the rest of the cup. Now, sometimes you'll do the cup in an SS20, 
but I really do find that SS16 is still the best for the lid. So you can always do SS20 for your cup and then do SS16 for your lid. So I'm going to start again, same as before, we're going to just do our line, our first line. start to place my stones. So I'm going to continue to work my way around and then I'm going to start laying the stones on the top. I'll use smaller, a smaller size to fill in on this beveled edge. Um, yes, I will put stones there and then I'll continue on into the center. So I will come back when this is completed guys and I will show you the final product. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, as you can see, I did put a little bit of gems on the corner here on this lid. So I, I don't know how well those are going to hold up, but I just I wanted to fill in that gap. And you can see it here in this video, how beautiful it is, how much it sparkles. So I've already given it to my sister-in-law. She says she loves it. Um, I didn't end up adding any epoxy to the base, but she said that she was going to add a little bit on there um, she likes making tumblers as well so she's been more familiar with like the tumbler or uh, with the epoxy method so all right well thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them for me down below and have a great day